2017 has not been a good year for YouTube drama. With YouTube cranking up the heat on its creators, the rise of the YouTube elite, and fake drama rising up from every corner of the platform, and overall we just end up with worse content. But every once in a while, someone will make the rare hit piece on a YouTuber that really ignites the conversation and overall brings entertainment. Last week, that person was iDubbbz, and today we're going to talk about it. There is something distinctly satisfying about seeing someone be put in the ground, but it has to be done right. This requires time and effort, as well as creativity and justification for doing so in the first place. Too many YouTubers will stir up drama just for the sake of getting clicks, and do so without any flair. In my opinion, one of the channels that does this good type of content best is iDubbbz TV with his Content Cop series. Recently, iDubbbz uploaded a Content Cop where the subject was rice gum, and since posting it, it has been the talk of the town. Now, I'm more interested in the aftermath of this situation than I am in analyzing the Content Cop itself, However, I would like to say that it was a little different from his previous ones. It didn't have the force of the Leafy or Keemstar content cops, and it wasn't as personal as the Tana Mongu content cop. This was a lighter, more playful video on someone who had done some shitty things in the past, and had even asked for a content cop. I have more to say about the nature of these types of videos, but I think that's for another time. You see, a short while ago, Ricegum actually released his response to Idub's content cop. And while I'm sure Idub's will have his own response to this video, I thought I'd go through it piece by piece to show you how Ricegum could have done a better job. I knew Rice was going to invite to his house the girl Idub's brought up in the beginning of his content cop. The way he dealt with her was a little... Like a pop star. Drinking in it bad, bitches jumping in the pool and I ain't got on no Oh, so her profession is to literally do anything for money. What a great idea to have her on. It was clear that he was trying to show they were best friends now despite what he said, but he didn't really prove anything and it made me wince every time she was on screen. It seemed like Reiska made the mistake of assuming that the criticism was more about the target of the tasteless comments, not the person who said them. But then he tried to spin it against items, which is a recurring mistake I saw throughout the video. When you say someone is being hypocritical, that means that you think that they won't practice what they preach, not that you think that the said practice is any good. Now in fairness, he did own up to the idea that it's wrong to make these jokes to this person. But what, he raped you? Nah, no, but did it feel good though? Reiskam actually made a good point by saying Idubs would be the last person to attack someone on the basis of making offensive jokes. But Idubs' criticisms weren't that Ricegum had been insensitive, they were that he had such little tact that the thought would even cross his mind to say something like that to a sex assault survivor. It doesn't matter who that person is, it's just the fact that he would say it to that person in the first place. The same applies for any less extreme example, like questioning a kidnapping victim about their experience versus joking about kidnapping someone on Twitter. The thing that changes is the sensitivity of the topic, but the contexts are equivalent. Black people don't own own any businesses, so that's. Ricega made a big mistake pretty early on by trying to use Idub's old videos against him. At first, I was interested because I thought he found something on him in his deleted videos, but nope, he did exactly what Leafy did and hadn't learned from it at all. We should remember that Idub's showcased him showcasing his deleted videos in response to Leafy. Ian even showed Leafy how he could have made that point better, but when it's coming from Ricegum, it just seems ignorant. It's clear Idub's doesn't care at all that he made poor content in the past, or that he had some personal insecurities that he grew out of. And Rice tried to draw a comparison to himself, saying that he too had grown out of his old ways. Content style will inevitably change over time, and this is what Idubs is an example of. And while it's true personalities can change over time, they don't necessarily have to, especially over just a couple of years. I have more to say about the evidence for this later on in the video, but next I want to talk about a good point that Ricegum actually made. I think Ricegum explained his point on flexing reasonably well. If he knows he's bougie as hell, and his fans like it, whatever. You can talk about the morality all you want, but most people are going to see it as subjective. Idubs offered an opinion, and while it was more presented as fact, I think we can agree to disagree on this point. However, I don't think it's necessarily true that if you have a lot of money, you are somehow doing yourself a disservice by not showing it to your fans. Ricegum also owned up to the 10 minute gag, and it did help his case to see PewDiePie do a similar thing. I would like to note that Idub said in his diss track that Ricegum was too afraid to go in on PewDiePie. I think Rice could have made a bigger deal about the fact that this is exactly what he was doing, but he missed that chance. It's a shame because while it doesn't really make Idub look bad, which he shouldn't be trying to do anyway, it does redeem Rice and make him look a little better. Then there was the response to the jokes portion where Idub said that clearly his videos weren't jokes. 
Rice Gum doubles down on this saying, All my videos are jokes. I don't know how he's going to tell me what my videos are or aren't. You know what I'm saying? Like, implying that the fact that Idebs doesn't know him or his intentions somehow justifies what is pretty plain to see. It's true, we'll never be able to know his true intentions, but it doesn't really matter what they are. All that really matters is what the evidence shows. I could strangle a person and say I meant to give them a hug, but that doesn't change the fact that I just shanked a bitch. <laughs> In the same way, it doesn't matter that Ricegum says his videos are jokes if the contents of them says otherwise. It would have been a much stronger argument if he had showed specific examples of times when his videos were clearly jokes, but he didn't think of that. Filming someone without consent was something I did two years ago. I'm sorry, you know, my bad. I won't do it ever again. However, I don't actually knows a lot about filming people without consent. <laughs> I know that when Ricegum showed that clip of Ian doing that vlog of him behind his back, he thought that he had Ian nailed. But again, this point is really neither here nor there. The event they were at was clearly public. It wasn't a private YouTuber party, and it wasn't on a live stream where the subjects clearly didn't know they were on screen. And while Ricegum does own up to it, he would have been much better off by saying Ian was simply being immature for filming him behind his back, but instead he tried to draw some hypocrisy out of this again. Oh, and remember how I said Ricegum hadn't grown out of his old dickish ways earlier in the video? Well, isn't it funny that amidst all of this, Rice fails to bring up one of the most controversial events that happened to him not so long ago. That's right, I'm talking about the Gabby Show incident, which Ricegum doesn't even touch on at all. One of Ian's biggest points was that this is a clear example of Ricegum's inability to use good judgment. Ian says that there were a million ways that he could have gotten out of that situation where the Gabby show was filming him at the party. I either run away or I smash. Those are the two options. If Ricegum really wanted to prove that he was a better person, he would have brought this up in the same breath and somehow justified it. But yet again, it's another missed opportunity. The point about pride was very poorly executed by Ricegum, and honestly, I thought it was going to be one of the easier things to make excuses for. When Ian calls him out for making the fake genius video, Ricegum responds by saying that he was going to explain his lyrics anyway, which means he missed the point. Seeing a common theme? The point was not that he fabricated a genius rap video, it was that he either thought so much of his lyrics or so little of his fans that he would have to explain himself. Ricegum doesn't really spend that much time talking about this point, so neither will I. And at long last, while it seemed hopeless, Ricegum makes another valid argument. He explains why he didn't end up announcing the winner of the clickbait challenge, and while it didn't strike me by any stretch of the imagination as being a hard-hitting attack by iDubs, I did understand the reasoning that he personally felt bad after seeing that someone had submitted the Ariana Grande video in the wake of the terror attack in Manchester. <sighs> you know what I'm going to do now, right? Yep, I'm going to tell you how he shit on his perfectly good rebuttal. Ricecom continues and says that he won't give out the money even now that this is cleared up. A lot of people are saying my career is over, I'm falling off, you know, after the content cop, things won't be the same because I'm just going down and I'm getting kind of worried. Like, what if that's true and that 10k might come in handy 20 years down the line? Yeah, that's right. Use it as an opportunity to make a stupid joke that doesn't even make sense. And I know there's going to be that one guy like, oh my god, Rice, what the, give someone 10k, you Boy, you, you didn't even do the challenge. Okay, so maybe that made up person you just quoted didn't enter into the contest. And the people who did? Again, another mixed bag when he responds to the music critiques. He's saying that every rapper out there has producers and a cameraman. This is true, and a completely valid point. But I think it may be a valid counterpoint in search of a point made by iDubs, because to me, it seemed like Ian was criticizing his music, on a surface level albeit, simply based on Ricegum's statements, where Rice said he was improving. And then Ricegum went on to say that the ghostwriter issue was allegations. If I were Ricegum, I wouldn't have touched that at all, because at this point, all we have is evidence against him. If you remember the situation of diss rappers DMs getting leaked, it seemed pretty clear that we had evidence to show Ricegum did indeed have a ghostwriter. In fact, it would have been much more effective to see diss rapper in the response video itself. Maybe he'd have to pay him off to get him on his good side, but it would have looked much better than arguing against a point that seems to have a good amount of weight. The counterpoints basically end at this juncture, and we get to see Ricegum pretend to get angry and go off to write his diss track. At the time I'm recording this video, the diss track has not yet been uploaded, but the previews he's shown us seem to suggest that it'll be similar to his other ones. I don't think we're going to see anything too shocking or unexpected. One other thing he does write is having us see him writing the song itself because it shows that he is at least capable of making music without a ghostwriter. It'll probably be very basic with lame insults and boring writing and it won't be funny at all. Despite that, the production quality will probably be good, at least in terms of the instrumental. And it will probably be fun to listen to without context, but if you're expecting a solid put down that completely destroys iDubs, don't hold your breath. 
So yeah, this went about as far as I thought it would. It's true, he was able to produce this very quickly compared to the constant cop, although we don't know exactly how long it took for Ian to make that. But as a result, it wasn't as clever or funny as it could have been. He made a handful of good arguments, but like I said, he didn't do himself any favor by holding his ground on some of them. And as I showed, many times he would start off strong and then ruin it by saying something that didn't really follow or by reaching too far. Ricegum also had a lot of opportunities to see what a bad reaction to a content cop looks like and learn accordingly. I think he did partially take into account Leafy's failed response video when considering his own explanation, which is why this wasn't as much of a dumpster fire. Because of that, there was a lot more of an expectation that he would be the first target to get this right. And I think it's fair to say, well, maybe next time. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you'll consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to my channel for more content. Yes, I know that it's been a very long time since I've released a video, but you can check out my update video to see my explanation for that. But for now, I'm just going to say thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.